Do you sometimes have issues with the boss and wish you could communicate better? I found that behind most issues, there's usually a few reasons. And in this video, I'll tell you what you can do to improve your relationship with the boss. Hi, I'm Paul Renault. I'm an executive coach with over 32 years of business experience. I have lived and worked in 10 countries, and my messages are to help you become a better leader. In my experience, a relationship with your boss can be heaven or hell. There is no middle ground. But managing your boss is doable by simply following five simple steps. Step number one, listen and learn. Bosses starting a new job need at least three months to be effective. They, him or her, were hired because the organization had a problem, it required a shakeup, or it needed a new direction. Pick up on these motives by truly listening. Talking on top of the boss to demonstrate how smart and how diligent you've been won't help. Be zen. Listen. Give the boss room by picking up on what he's not saying. Practice your listening skills. Step number two, become self-reliant. Bosses who don't provide adequate direction can be a good thing. Fly on your own. Learn from peers as to how they've managed the boss. Do the same. At your next one-on-one -on -one meeting with the boss, indicate you've solved X problem by doing Y. Wait and assess the reaction. You may get, well done, or next time let's discuss this, or three, don't decide on these matters without briefing me. Now, if you've messed up, don't hesitate to acknowledge that this was your oversight and it won't happen again. I mean, we're going fishing here, so apologize quickly if you think this will settle a delicate situation. If your boss doesn't recognize or appreciate your efforts, so be it. Deep down, you know if you've done the right thing or not. Number three, get better at communicating. In one week, I had two examples of a boss and direct reports avoiding each other, executives. They were too uncomfortable having a frank discussion of what had to be solved. Sort of a, there's an elephant in the room, but I don't want to be the first to say it. The paradox is you're waiting for the boss to bring it up. He's testing if you have the courage to address it. So bring up the awkward subjects. Talk about your poor results. Show the boss your initiative required to do the job. This builds trust over time. Some bosses are technically strong, but they're not always good communicators. Number four, choose your battles. With a difficult boss, everyday conversations can seem like warfare when explaining your course of action. The higher you climb, the less feedback you'll receive, and you're expected to be nimble with all kinds of bosses. These are learning opportunities. Good leaders will test your logic, your reasoning, and your sense of flexibility to commit. If you've lost a battle, let it go. Don't keep score on who's winning or losing. And number five, arc, act of random kindness. Develop rapport with the boss. Now, networking with a boss may seem impossible. So how do we do it? Try to find a common interest. Tennis, sailing, pottery, yoga, kids of the same age. Now, people usually post photos of hobbies or family in their work area or office. Next time, take a look and ask a few genuine questions. If the boss opens up on his interests, try to get to know him a bit better. Maybe he's having the same issues with kids the same age as yours. In this case, provide a quick solution, such as babysitter, school, pediatrician, without being intrusive. With an act of random kindness and the right timing, notice how you've developed rapport with your boss. Now give these five tips your best shot. When it comes to developing people skills, we all get better with practice. Now, if you've liked what you've heard, just head over to my website and get the How to Manage Your Boss article. You'll find it in the link below. Thank you.